I, I, mean, see, what, I mean, what what is the deal? I mean, the thing I'm saying is this: everybody wants to be a victim of something today. Mm-hmm. I mean, this is, I mean, eyes is the era where you can become a millionaire, and somebody says your product is no good, and you're a victim. Now, the thing of the matter, I saw Ice T on TV doing something where he's a couple of years ago. He said, and whatever anybody says about me, I made $2 million last year. So now the thing I'm saying is this. Look, like what this woman was saying about her concern with her kids and what... Can, what can this, you say what... what uh, say oh, last you, week we were talking well, about a yeah. conference that you went to and there was a woman who complained, a black woman, I take it, who was upset she, by well, she was, rap lyrics. Yeah, but a lot, yeah, wait, but a lot of people, people complain about that. A lot of people are concerned what their kids hear and the attitudes that come out of this stuff. I heard my daughter when she was seven or something going around chanting, I'm a hoe, you know I'm a hoe, and I'm a hoe because I tell you so. And I said, what are you saying? Translation for white people? I'm a whore. So she didn't know what that meant. Now, see, so I asked her in some group called Houdini, and she'd heard that on their, their recording. Now, all I'm saying is this, is that, look, pop music is primarily for, for music or, or a phenomenon for adolescents to get their little petty adolescent grievances out with, to fall in love, to dance to, to party to, etc. Now, what I'm trying to figure out is why we have to take a bunch of this and suddenly put it over in a category that it has essentially nothing to do with. I mean, I mean, okay, so some black kids are upset about something. Now, the thing of the matter is, they're not going to, I mean, they don't run, you know, they're not running schools. They're not involved in illiteracy programs. They're not involved in hygiene, you know, teaching hygiene. They're not involved in voter registration, a lot of things. Some, some small number of them may be. But the fundamental problems that face black youth or any youth in the Western world today is how do you best prepare yourself to live a life in a competitive society? And that reality is not going to go away. Pulling some fake gun out in a video is not going to change the fact that as soon as a person turns off the TV, they're starting to pick crack vials out in the hallway. There's no topic that concerns me more than the one on the conspiracy to destroy black boys. And the reason is when our little boys are in preschool and primary grades, they're very innocent and very enthusiastic about learning. But something happens to that, and we need to find out what that is. My younger son is on the cover of this particular book, and I would like for him to grow up to be a man. Like many of you already told me, that you have sons and male students as well. Now there's two parts of the conspiracy, volume one, and this is volume two. In volume one, we raise four questions. First question is, when did the conspiracy start? Who is against black boys? Why is there a conspiracy against them? And what exactly is the conspiracy? That's in volume one. In volume two, we look at the relationships between mothers and their sons. That must be studied. We also must look at female teachers and black male students. That must also be studied. We must look at some case studies. In other words, many of us are doing a very good job developing black boys to be men. What is it that some of us are doing that others are not doing? And then last but not least, a program called the Rites of Passage in the Manhood. See, it used to be we knew when black boys became men, but now many of us don't know when we're men. It's how much reefer we smoke, how much wine we drink, how many babies we make. Until black men spell it out to black boys what it means to be a man, this conspiracy will continue. The fact that my mother cannot go out in the street, not because of white people, by the way, in Houston, Texas, after dark, or because the majority of black people in the so-called inner cities are oppressed by a criminal class of, of street thugs who are not white, by the way, is not going to be changed by some video. I find, these are pop people. These people, are, this is all pop. The thing I'm trying to figure out is, why are we supposed to expect anything heavy from people in pop? I mean, the first thing is pop. It's for teenagers. And I mean, it's not, I mean, and at best you get a certain, you get clever slogans at most. I mean, none of this stuff has any enduring value. And the thing is that most people who go into it do not go into it perhaps for the reason that this young woman is in it or who have the, the lofty intellectual references regardless of whether or not they're accurate that Harry Allen has. You know, I mean, these people go in there for the same reason that people put put shovels and pans on donkeys in, in 1849 and went to California to get some gold. <laughs> so secondarily, I mean, I mean, you know, uh, Nelson Mandela could not have in South Africa, say, started a rap group and, be, and become a millionaire, talk, uh, chanting, ranting about the overthrow of apartheid. So what I mean is, it's a you know, this is a business. It's a business, and it's a, and it's a version. It's a racial version of of the anti-social, uh, pug, pugnacious behavior that's been sold ever since the beginning of rock and roll. For instance, I mean, I mean, the, well, well, actually, what he pointed out was he was talking about the 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 
the the significance of of the electronic technology to the making of the music itself, music quote unquote. Because I mean, the first thing is most of the people who make who are rap who are in rap are not musicians. They can't sing. If they could sing, they would sing. See, that's the thing. I, see, one thing I believe is that if you can sing, you will sing. So if you you either if you're either an instrumental if you in music you're either an instrumentalist or a singer. Now, if you somebody who chants over a backbeat is not a musician. But how about the people who make the music? The people who produce the music? This is a new type of music. It's the '90s. We're talking about electronics. We're talking about. Um, I mean, Marvin Gaye, Marvin Gaye and Stevie Wonder did that. I mean, in other words, so you know, and so did the Beatles. I mean, in other words, stuff that was created in studios. Uh -huh. that let me let me say that them, so how is that could not emulate on television. How is that different? I mean, on, well, the media. I mean, the media always. I mean, the media sensationalizes anything. I mean, that's. I mean, that's what you expect from media. But we do have to admit now that there are many of these 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 video shows on television where you do get this. Get get this range that she's talking about of these different people doing what they do. I mean, it's like when if you look at some black video show, the only thing they show is not people, some fake uh, a person pretending that they're gonna be involved in some revolution. When they what the revolution that they're dealing with is 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 the, is the bank revolution of how much they're getting paid, to, how much they're getting paid to sell this political black exploitation to these kids. The, the thing is, is that you know, I mean, when you look at that, you see people at parties, you see guys bragging about themselves, you see women dancing. You see, I mean, you, I mean, there's a whole bunch of stuff. But the, but the question, see, the, see, the thing I find most fascinating, and to me, Mr. Allen is a perfect example of it, is that what you have is you have what a friend of mine calls the the the, the 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 bootlegging of a liberal arts rhetoric to describe something that's far that's that's really not of the stature of what the references are. Now when he see now when he pulls T. S. Eliot and 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 Pablo Picasso in as an analogy for what somebody in public enemy or sister soldier somebody is doing, that's an example of, of what rock criticism has begat. You know, which is that these people who go to college, they end up with this this set of references that they use to describe something that's essentially trivial. But you see, <laughs> this stuff, see, this is the thing that I find fascinating. And this is why I think that it's, there's a fundamental condescension on the part of white people towards black people in this. Mm -hmm. I mean, there should be a lot higher expectation from black youth or black, pe black people at large. That is, if some group of, of white women who could in fact prove that they had been raped during some robberies by some so-called minority guys in America. Put together a group, a rap group of white women chanting raps that would, would essentially say, you black guys who did this, you niggas who did such and such to us, and you do this, we will never be a plus. And I get a kind of, those kind of simple-minded rhymes that they have. If they did that, everybody white would be outraged at that. Now, the thing that I find fascinating is that I think that there's an intellectual dishonesty and cowardice on the part of the black community and the white community. I mean, because that kind of stuff flipped over, mm. flipped over and said, if somebody, some white guy put out a thing about Ivan Bosky and Michael Milken and those Jewish guys in Wall Street and did a rap about crooked Jewish Jewish stockbrokers, mm -hmm. they would be shouted down. Uh, hey, wait a second, I, I would argue that Guns N' Roses got into a hell they, of a trouble over recent songs they wrote which dissed, uh, you know, yeah, because expressed they, disgust for homosexuals or Jews or what, you know. No, that's so, the, so, no but that's the they point. They white I'm, guys. No, okay? but that's so, the point yeah. I'm making. The point is, is that, is that, is that when white people do something that, that is really stupid, it's not, it's not, it's not, it's not justified by anybody as the result of them being either because they are poor or because they're, uh, from some class or something like that, they just looked at as jerks. Like Axl Rose right. is depicted He's primarily right. as a jerk. When you read pieces in Rolling Stone and others, as I have, about people like Ice Cube and others, what you have is some white guy who's on another safari into a, in, 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 into Coontown. And what he does is he loves hanging around with Ice Cube and these guys. And so he comes back out of the concrete jungle and gives a report. But there's no respect for them as human beings. I absolutely agree. Okay.